Hello and welcome to the second video about the Google Summer of Code project 3D Audio. This time I'm proud to announce that, that the main target of the project has been implemented, which is adding speaker objects to your scene to render out 3D audio animation. So in this video I'm going to show you how to use these speaker objects. So this video is basically the first tutorial about this feature. Um, I've prepared a simple uh, spaceship animation here where I use Star Wars spaceships from BlendSwap. And to show you how to use the speakers, I'm going to use this X-Wing fighter here, where I disable the constraints so we can add the speaker objects more easily. So I open the Add menu and add our first speaker object. This speaker should play the sound of our engines and so I'm placing the speaker which uh, has the sound source exactly in the middle of the object uh, here at the end of the fighter. Then I go to the object data where I can set the settings for the speaker object. So I'm assigning a simple name and open our prepared engine sound. Then you have here volume and pitch values which you can animate just like in the sequencer. And then you have distance and cone properties just like in the sound actuator of the game engine. So the speaker object basically behaves like a point light. So um, the sound is spread into all directions and we're going to use this uh, mode here to do our animation, so the rotation of the speaker actually doesn't really matter. Uh, it does however matter when you change the cone settings here, which basically changes the speaker object to kind of spotlight source, where the, you have an uh, outer and an inner cone, and outside the outer cone the volume is set to this outer cone volume here, and between inner and outer cone the volume is interpolated from maximum to this value here. Then we have the distance settings here, which I want to introduce shortly. Um, the property we are going to use later here is the reference distance, which tells you at which distance the volume is 100%. So typically sound effects are recorded one meter far away from the sound source, but for an explosion we are going to use later, uh, you for sure have to record from a farther away distance, so we're going to change this then. Then you have minimum and maximum volumes, so no matter how far or near you to the object, uh, the volume won't be lower or higher than these values and you have a maximum distance no matter if you're farther away uh, always this maximum distance is used to calculate the volume effect. And last but not least this parameter here controls how strong the distance influences the volume of the speaker object. So I've already set the engine sound now I'm going to parent this speaker object to the X-Wing fighter and it will um, follow the animation of this X-Wing fighter. Um, the next thing I want to do is um, add some laser shot sounds um, and this I'm going to add at the end of these laser guns here. So I switch to a top view, add another speaker and place it here at the end of the laser gun and again I'm going to set the laser sound, name the speaker accordingly and that's basically already it. Now a simple position from the side and as I want to have all four laser guns playing the same sound I'm just uh, going to Art D duplicate this object so that the speaker data actually stays the same for all of those four speakers. Again duplicating 
and last but not least I have to parent those again and that's it. So what you might wonder now is when actually does the laser sound start to play and for this we have the NLA editor here where I'm going to show only selected objects and there is already an NLA strip added at the frame we were when adding the speaker object which basically only tells when the sound playback should start. So all of these speaker objects now play right at the first frame and that's not what we want. So I'm going to enable this constraint again here and follow the object and now this X-Wing fighter here is playing its sounds at the first is at frame 109 where you can see this laser shot object appearing here so we set this playback start to exactly the same frame and uh, the advantage of this is that you can set mul multiple sound starts uh, to a single speaker object. So 10 frames later, uh, I mean 40 frames later, this uh, same laser gun is going to shoot again, so I add here another sound clip. Um, the same is true for this laser and again this time I use the shortcut shift K and I do the same things for the other laser guns So just to let you see that this actually is right, you can see that here the laser object appears and 40 frames later again there's a laser object which appears here. So with this set we can now try out our um, our audio animation and play this back the first time. And what you heard now is that the shots came too early compared to the uh, visual result. So what you always should enable is audio video sync so that frames that uh, weren't rendered fast enough are skipped. So now I'm trying this again. And now the sound comes at the correct time. So we've animated this uh, X-Wing fighter and what I want to show you also is that you can actually use sound to suggest things that aren't really in the scene so although you don't see this uh, TIE fighter here when at this frame as you can see in the camera review here but I'm going to add a speaker object here sorry that was wrong I'm going to uh, add a speaker object here which plays an explosion sound so although I did nothing to render any visuals from an explosion, I've added an explosion sound here. And as I said earlier, I'm going to change the reference distance here to 10, so that the explosion sound actually has been recorded 10 meters far away, although I don't know if that's true. Um, and luckily the NLA strip for playback already has been placed at the frame I want this explosion to happen. 
So let's try this out. Yeah, you could hear the explosion and that it's coming from the left. And this way you can nicely uh, do things that aren't really visible but you can hear them so this adds a lot of value to your animations if you do this. So I'm not going to uh, add speaker objects all over the scene here because it's basically always the same. So I'm going to open the finished scene here and I will show you how to finish off this process because in the scene buttons here I already opened you now have the update animation cache button which had another name in the last video um, we're going to press this here to be really uh, accurate with our cache because I just opened the file and then I'm going to mix down this um, audio animation now, um, which is also a new feature. So I can basically enter any file name I want to have here and I'm going to use uh, mp3 format. So I chose choose mp3 and here I can set the sample format and the bitrate. So I want to be higher quality so I set it to 256 and I can also set the size of the mixdown buffer which has an influence on the accuracy so um, basically you don't have to change this value here only if the um, <coughs> and, uh, the result is not accurate enough for you um, you can lower this value to get more accurate the most accurate is uh, a value of 1 but um, this will take really long to um, render the 3D audio. So I'm just going to use 1024 and this will be accurate enough for this animation. So another thing I want to show quickly is here the container formats you can choose. Um, depending on what you chose you can also set other settings like the codec to use um, or the uh, format which is uh, the sample format and maybe also the bitrate um, and all these possibilities you can set here should actually work so um, it's only displaying you possibilities that actually work so now I'm going to mix this down it takes a little while and now it's finished and now I can use this mp3 file um, so you can not only export the audio via rendering an animation with some uh, audio codec set here but you can now also uh, mix down the uh, audio animation separately so that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed this video and goodbye.